Welcome to Panem Crater. Uh, so here we are. Uh, there is again the Sierra Nevada for reference off to our west. Um, and so Long Valley Caldera would be over the ridge that way. And then these gray hills here are the mono craters. Um, so this is a chain of, of rhyolite domes. Um, these have also had plenty in style eruptions uh, with tall eruption columns in the past. Uh, but most of the features you see are, are old rhyolite flows. Um, if you sort of squint at them, you can see they sort of have steep sides and flat tops. Um, that's sort of the characteristic shape of a uh, rhyolite flow. And then here, this low mound here in front of us is Panem Crater. Um, what we're seeing here is the what's called the ejector ring, which is basically the bits of lava that were flung out uh, of the crater during its um, Strombolian eruptive phase. Uh, the trail, main trail goes up over in the rim there. We'll, we'll come back that way. I don't get called a specific bloom, but there's lots of these little pink flowers here. It's never seen quite this many before. Right here. One perennially fun activity in your panel crater is these big blocks of pumice. And they look like something that should weigh like 200 pounds. But this is pumice, it's, well, it still weighs probably like 30 pounds, but uh, maybe 40. But, um, you're not actually supposed to collect any rocks here. Here's a view of Panem Crater from the east. Behold, we are now coming to the east rim of Panem Crater. So you see this nice uh, rim here again is made of ejecta thrown out of the uh, vent sort of piled up in a big ring, uh, an ejecta ring or a tephra ring. And then in the middle you can see the lava dome, um, which I don't think I'm going to climb from this angle. And of course Mono Lake and Pauha Island. You can just barely see Naked Island and Black Point through the gap down there. You can see a really nice Rhyolite flow down there, the toe of the mono craters behind that truck. The last thing that happened then was the intrusion of this lava dome, uh, this rhyolite dome. Um, and at that point, most of the gas has already escaped. So it no longer had enough gas in it to explode. So it just flowed up out of the ground. And furthermore, I think I mentioned this at the obsidian dome stop, but uh, once all the gases have come out, um, with, with less volatiles, the crystallization of the magma is retarded or slowed down, uh, and that tends to make it quench into obsidian, or at least a glass. And actually here, a lot of it is pumice, which is still glass, but with bubbles in it. So here, it probably still had a little bit more gas left in it than it did at Obsidian Dome. So here we are up on top, and you can see that there's sort of a, a field of these spines of various rhyolite magmas. A mixture of pumice and obsidian, mostly some crystallized rhyolite, but very chaotic. Although one might think that a lot of this rubble formed uh, due to later erosion and things like that, there's some evidence that a lot of the cracking of this magma happened. Uh, one way to tell that is if you look at some of these rocks, um, they have these big straight fractures. When you look up close, the obsidian is actually started to ooze out of the cracks. See how the obsidian is all domed out like this? So in this case, um, it actually cracked while it was still hot. Um, now, how do you crack a liquid magma? Well, again, remember the vis the, that rhyolite magma is incredibly uh, thick and sticky. You know, you could build a fireproof house on top of this. It would have to be fireproof because otherwise it would melt. But, um, you know, if you had a fireproof material, you could build a house on top of rhyolite and it wouldn't sink in very quickly. Probably thinking, well, it'd probably catch on fire first, so it's moot. Um, but, you know, basically this rock was still molten when it fractured. Um, so after it fractured and tumbled down, um, then the, the obsidian, which is a little bit more viscous, sorry, a little bit less viscous, was able to squeeze out of the cracks. Uh, you can also see some really crazy folding here. 
what we call pigmatic folding, um, presumably by, by flow inside the magma while it was still liquid. Uh, it, it seems like these more crystallized layers um, were a little bit more rigid, so they behaved semi-rigidly and folded up uh, while, the, while the glassy parts kept flowing. 